objects tend to speed up and slow down. This is the perception of most people on the planet. You give an object a push and it will move a distance and slow down. This one truism blighted the progress of physics for hundreds of years. No matter where you go on Earth, objects always slow down. It is like the natural state of objects is to be stationary. Through all observational methods this idea holds true. It was the groundbreaking interpretation of motion by Sir Isaac Newton which changed all this and allowed us to see motion as it really is, a pairing of forces. On Earth, whenever you apply a force, give something a push or a pull. That force is counteracted by a force of friction. We have already discussed this phenomena in discussions of free fall and terminal velocity. Newton saw that motion was a force to move an object and another force to stop an object. In fact, his interpretation went a lot further than just stopping and starting. His first law also incorporates change in direction, motion back and forth, motion in a circle, spinning motion and any other kind of motion you can think of. A body will remain in the same state of motion unless acted on by an external force. What this means is that if you apply a force, you will make a body change its state of motion. A state of motion is more simply called its velocity. I am very careful to use the term velocity here, as a change in direction requires a force, just the same as a change in magnitude would. If we take the simple example of a box that is stationary, we can know that the forces acting on the box are equal. If we were to draw a force diagram to represent the forces acting on this box, we would have a drawing of a box with an arrow pointing downwards to represent the force of gravity on the object. This would be starting at the object's centre of gravity. We would also have a force equal in size to this gravitational force, but opposite in direction, pointing straight upwards, contacting the box at the edge, representing its contact with the table or floor. If you were to add up these two forces using vector addition methods, they would give an overall force of zero. We shall discuss why you can use vector mathematics in the next podcast. If we change the direction of either of these two forces, the overall vector wouldn't be zero anymore, so the object would feel a force in that direction. Now, supposing that we had a stationary box and we struck it with a hammer to make it move sideways, we could represent this as an arrow on the edge of our box going left or right. It doesn't matter in which direction, as long as the direction of motion is perpendicular to the gravity slash reaction balanced pair of forces. This hammer blow is a new force, and so makes the objects move in the direction of the force. It needn't make the object move in that direction, as we shall soon see, but in this situation it does. Our box will slow down and eventually stop, because we have frictional forces at play in our system. These frictional forces can be represented as arrows on the edge of the box pointing in the opposite direction to the hammer blow. Initially, this frictional force is large, as frictional force is directly proportional to speed at which an object travels. The value of the frictional force will decrease as the speed of the object decreases. If we were to sum up all the frictional force over time and apply it to the single arrow, it would be the same size and opposite in direction to the initial hammer blow. So, we could show an animation of the action of these forces as an arrow on a box for one second at one point, and then an arrow on a box in the opposite direction for one second in the opposite direction. The animation shows the forces involved in the scenario, but doesn't show the motion. This object will have increased and then decreased its velocity, and its displacement will have increased to a maximum value when the velocity has decreased to zero. The acceleration of the system will have been present in one direction initially, and then present in the opposite direction at the end. Acceleration and force are the topics of our next discussion, Newton's second law. As I mentioned earlier, motion need not be in the direction of the force. The force only tells us 
in which direction the acceleration is. As previously covered on topics of projectile motion, it is possible for a force to act in a different direction to the motion or velocity of the object. What the force does in this case is slows the object down and then increases its velocity in the direction of the force.